Hello, it is Anna Nimura from uh, Blockchain Futurist Conference 2019, and I have a pleasure with speaking with Ben Gertzel, a CEO of Singularity Net. And uh, welcome here, welcome at the Blockchain Futurist Conference. Ah, it's good fun to be here. Yes, fantastic. Um, well, we are going to speak, of course, with Ben about artificial intelligence. What else? What is the future? And how everything is going to evolve? Um, we, like, people always are curious what is going to happen. You know, they started even like showcasing the movies, 1965, Jean-Louis Godard about Alphaville, then, you know, the famous movie with Harrison Ford, uh, Blade Runner from 1984, and even the second one, which shows uh, Blade Runner 2049, and showing all, you know, everything like doom and gloom of what artificial intelligence, robots and computers are going to bring. It, this is really what is going to happen. Uh, doom and gloom cannot be 100% ruled out, but I tend to be an optimist. I mean, I think AI, robots, nanotechnology, biotech, all these things together, they're going to create an economy of abundance, which is going to lead us to you know, new frontiers we, we, we can't even imagine. And, you know, humanity 100 years from now is going to be unimaginably beyond where we are today due to the power of these technologies that we're, that we're building right yes. now. So, I mean, th there are risks and we've got to navigate those risks and there's going to be some ups and downs, but I think there's amazing positive potential. Yes. So, sometimes when I'm like watching those movies or even thinking about it, I'm thinking, okay, the next generation, whoever is going to be born, they are going to have like chip implanted and yes it's going to be a cashless and walletless society that you know chip is going to tell um, you know where we are what we're doing is it a possibility well sure but a chip telling where you are and what you're doing is the least interesting part I mean imagine you have a chip in your brain that lets you transmit thoughts to other people you can send thought SMS's instead of typing them and I mean imagine you have a chip in your brain it lets you share thoughts with a superhuman AI system running on a distributed com compute cloud. Your whole consciousness is going to be in a different space than it is right now. But is it not dangerous? Is it it's something that, like, we keeping our thoughts for ourselves? Language is dangerous, uh, but yet it has a lot of value to it, right? I mean, you can imagine a bunch of cavemen at the dawn of inventing spoken language saying, well, isn't that dangerous to communicate? Like, we, you know, my, your, your, your girlfriend could, could find out what you were doing in the next village over or something. But, <laughs> that I mean, is a little bit scary. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, language is dangerous. It led to a lot of nasty things. It also led to, you know, literature, the, the, the internet, and song, songs with lyrics and programming languages and a lot of amazing stuff, right? And I think, these new technologies, you know, like language writing, machinery, the internet, the wheel, fire, all of these things have great aspects and terrible aspects. And that's, that's the nature of, of progress. What's most fundamental about what's happening now, though, is all these previous inventions humanity made with their positive or negative aspects, they were all deployed by the same old human brains. Right now we're looking at actually changing the human brain by upgrading it technologically and integrating humans with other kinds of intelligent systems. So it's no longer a tool used by humans, not just a transformative tool, it's actually something that will transform humans at base into, into something different, which is the, the transhumanist philosophy, which is really exciting to some people and really disturbing to others. So, are we going to become better human beings? We will become different and we will believe that we are better. You could ask, are we better now than people were 500 years ago? We think so. We don't want to go back to the Middle Ages. On the other hand, the average European in the Middle Ages, if they looked at 2019, 
they would think we're all possessed by Satan and gonna burn in hell. I mean, we, we, we have gay marriage, like we expose our body parts walking, walking down the street. We don't go to church on Sunday, right? I mean, we, we spend all day sitting indoors, staring at screens typing. So with respect to medieval human values, we've now gone way downhill. But with respect to our own values now, we're way better off. And I guess that may be the same way. Like someone from today looking at humanity from 100 years from now might find some things really alien and off-putting. But the people or the, the trans people 100 years from now will be really happy. They'll be like, oh my God, I don't want to go back to like being a meat brain stuck in a single body and, and getting old and, and dying and not being able to send thoughts to my friends and not having access to you know a supercomputer within my every thought they won't be able to imagine going back to the limitations that we have now so, so you're already telling that my newest newest phone i just purchased it's already passé probably yeah i mean but what will happen in the future is as soon as you get your new brain it will become passé and, and you'll need to upgrade to a new one so you're saying that it is possible that we will be transmitting our thoughts just communicating that we are just near one another. Well, sure. I mean, if, if, you have a, if you have a translator from your brain state into a computer signal, you can have Wi-Fi telepathy, right? 4G, 10G telepathy. I mean, you don't need magic or the paranormal for that, right? You just need to understand the brain code and have the brain's code decoded by a chip that's implanted in your brain. I mean, that's... That, that's almost straightforward. So you created Robot Sophia. So when, when you were creating that, what do you see in humans that should be improved? And you can translate this into creation of the robot. Other, other, otherwise, what it bothers you in humans the most that you can improve it and make it like better in, in the robot version? Yeah, David Hansen created the face and the hardware of Sophia, and I led the Sophia software team. And one advantage robots like Sophia have over people is they're all networked together. Anything one Sophia sees, and there's a number of Sophia robots out there, not just one. Anything one Sophia sees, they can beam up to the cloud and back down to another Sophia. They can communicate thought to thought rather than through language. I mean, another advantage is everything the robot sees it can remember, it's stored forever, whereas we, we forget a great deal because of the ways our, our, our mind works. We, also, the human mind has a limitation of seven to nine objects it can visualize at once or holding its short-term memory. I mean, an AI can hold an arbitrarily large number of elements in, in its short-term memory. So there's, there, we can't visualize a thousand objects at one time without blurring out a lot of them, an AI can. So that, there's a lot of shortcomings. I mean, right now, we still have strengths and the ability to imagine, to dream, to, to create, and to adapt and generalize to new circumstances. But as today's narrow AI systems give way to tomorrow's artificial general intelligence, AGI systems, AIs are going to be able to generalize, imagine, you know, dream, and, and uh, create as well or better than people and we're going to have to either fuse with the AIs or become left behind and be like the squirrels in the national park who are you know running having our own happy lives but outside the park there are minds vastly more comprehensive than ours. I wouldn't like for the humans to become something like it was depicted in the uh, planet of the apes. Well no that's why I say the squirrels in the national park though because I think a superhuman AI We'll have no need to enslave people. And we'll have much, so many resources that the resources for us to live won't be significant to us. It's just, we'll be like chimpanzees are to human beings. Like we actually, we want to preserve them. We want to make a wildlife reserve for them. And we don't want to turn them into humans. We want to let them to do their own thing. They have their own beauty. But we know they can't understand most of what we're doing, right? So, I mean, I think future AIs that are a billion times smarter than humans, they will love and respect humans as, as their creators, and they will want to preserve us out of a kind of nostalgia as a history museum, right? But 
but we'll be off there in the in the human wildlife preserve unless we want to join the the superhuman mind matrix and these are the technologies we're building right now in projects like my singularity net project where we're trying to use ai right now and use blockchain to create decentralized ai networks we're trying to create a global ai mind that can become more and more intelligent so it can give rise to general intelligence and ultimately super intelligence ben are you optimistic about the future i'm very optimistic yeah i've always been optimistic now this may tell you more about my personality than about the future but but uh, anyway being pessimistic isn't going to help because these technologies are being developed very fast because they deliver so much economic value and so much good for the world right now. No one's going to stop developing them. It's not like nuclear weapons, which are only good for blowing people up. We're talking about AI, which can make money on the stock market, which can, which can cure diseases, which can optimize supply chains, you know, which can control beautiful robots to help you in your, your home and your office. So, I mean, these. These AIs have so much practical value now that they're going to be developed. So our choice isn't whether to develop AI or not. Our question is how to direct the inevitable development of AI in a beneficial direction. Well, we will know everything in the future then, and we'll see what the future will bring. All right. Ben, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for all the excellent questions. Well, uh, happy, happy to talk to you anytime. You have like a fantastic input on and definitely making me much more optimistic about what is going to happen and what AI is going to bring to us. Thank you so thank much. Thank you too.